Buenos dias, Gunners Collective TV. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking smack addict. Bye, up, Bye, up. In a menudo style and direct fashion, we're going to get straight into the content of the day. But before we do, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Ding! Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directing the direction of the dope content that the gun is kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. We're going up on this channel. It's all because of you. For that, I can say I'm very humbled and very appreciative. So, gracias. So... What's the hardest, and I mean the hardest ranfla that I've ever ran into when it comes to the Southsiders or Sureños? Well, that's easy. That's that 805 car, that old school 805 car. Oxnard, Ventura, Chiques, them bottles from fucking Bakersfield, Santa Maria, all them bottles. Long poke or long poke or whatever the fuck you want to say it, they'll poke your ass in the pocket if you act stupid, right? The 805 area was always the toughest and most dangerous area when it came to the youth authority, now in prison, it's a different story. In prison, all Southsiders move efficiently and accordingly. Um, but probably the most vicious and violent group that I ran into in the youth authority was the 805ers, man. Which Bakersfield used to be from the 805, so that's a whole different story for a different place. But the second group that used to move dangerously too when I was in the youth authority was the motherfucking SGV. The Sul Gangster Valle, the uh, San Gabriel Valley. Damn Vatos, the Pomona 12th Street Sharkies. They'll take a chunk out of you, quick, with a piece or not a piece, forever, man. They're just with that shit. So, I wanted to tell you guys a story about how the Bakersfield Sureños moved on us and caught us, right? We actually knew it was going to happen, but we couldn't prevent the inevitable, man. Let me explain something to you, okay? This right here is a regular thumb. You guys see my thumb? This is a regular thumb. This is a, a product of what happened. This is what gangbanging does. It leaves scars. You get maimed. You know, if you're really putting in, you got issues with your head because you, you move different now all of a sudden because they got you. But this is a thumb as a result of this incident. This is my other thumb as a result of the incident. Do you guys see the difference? They gave me sideways thumb. I got a flat thumb fucking with the dudes from Bakersfield. True stories. Now, here we go. So I pulled up to NRCC in Sacramento and I was a young buck, youngster, convicted of murder, man. Didn't know how to act. A little bit of a chip on my shoulder. Wanting to earn my stripes, thinking I'm all tough because I come in for killing one of the opposition, right? So I automatically thought, hey, I'm in a position to prosper. I'm in a position to be in a position to be in that position. But I was just a young kid coming in dumb as fuck and listening to propaganda. So as I came in, my first sell, my first selling was Little White Nez, the Fresno Bulldogs. And this is back when Bulldogs were Northanials. So he is already seasoned enough. This He was already on a violation. This was his second term. Even in YA, you count terms, right? If you're a new booty, a fish... Everyone knows that you're a first-termer. So he was seasoned up. So, of course, I get in the cell. I'm scared. I'm a youngster. I don't know what it is to be. I'm in the California Youth Authority now. This is like a big achievement. In the gang world back then, in the 90s, you weren't shit unless you went to YA. That's a fact. That's the truth. Like, if you went to YA, that means you were one of those ones putting in work, handling your shit accordingly and aggressively, and you earned stripes already to get there. So everybody, it was a who's who of who the fuck are these gang members, right? That's how that was. So just getting there, you already got the clout or the, the respect of, okay, you made it here. It's hard to even make it to YA. Most people go to placements, juvenile halls, group homes, all that. I skipped all of that. I passed go, did not collect no 200, went from Baltic Ave to Boardwalk, right? I was over there for real. So I knew there was going to be a lot of gang members from different cities. And that was my first time meeting gang members from Fresno, Bakersfield, Stockton, Sacramento, the Bay, now, of course, NRCC got, is the Northern California reception, so it had bottles from everywhere, from the Bay Area, from the Valley. There was hella homeboys there from Sanjo, from Salas, from Tulare County. I mean, everything was there. Southern Reception Center was down south. That's where they sent everywhere from Santa Barbara on back. Usually, Bakersfield would go there, but it was like split. Half of Bakersfield would go to Northern California Reception Center. Half would go to Southern California Reception Center. So there was always a big bus coming full of Southsiders from Bakers. And believe me, they held their own, man, at least the best way they could. We got off on them every time they touched dirt, but at the same time, huh, they got off too. Here's this story, right? So, listening on the tier, man, and, and, and the homeboy laced me up. Hey, listen on the tier, listen to different volumes. This is how you become aware of who's around you, your surroundings. So, I'd listen every night on the door. I wouldn't bump the baking soda breath on the door, but I'd listen to other people doing it, right? And I hear about those talking about Barrio Bakers and Bakers Trece and Oki Bakers and Colonia and Loma and all these different Barrios and Bakers because they had us at the end of the building and that's where they had all the Southsiders. They put all the Southerners all the way down at the end to kind of keep them, I guess, 
um, away from the Northerners, but I mean, there was too many of us there. There was probably like, it was like a 72, 73 man dorm. There was probably like 40, 40 Northerners, maybe 10 Southsiders, F that, maybe six, seven of them. And then the rest, blacks, whites, and, and whatever. So anyways, we had just got a bus load in. And these dudes were seizing. You could tell as these Southsiders started coming down the theater, we're in our cell looking. They're all blasted back, 13s on their face, three dots. And believe me, back then the tattoos on the face meant something. Not like nowadays where you get tattoos like this, Bob Wilson, right? And you think you're the fucking Joker. Or you get a fucking pair of fucking uh, pro wings on your eye. Or you get a fucking uh, ice cream cone melting on your cheek. Or you get a fucking 13 in the middle of your head that's backwards. That looks like it's melting, right? We're talking about motherfuckers that really got the tattoos to represent their neighborhood and their vaudevilles. They wanted to let everybody know what time it was and where they were from. So here you had all these Southsider Sureños, right? Coming And um, again, I know there's a big difference between a Sureño and a Southsider. Okay, but back in my days, I did not know the difference. So as a kid, they called themselves Sureños. We called them Sureños. As we got older... We went to prison. We understood the politics behind the word Sureño and how it's an earned privilege to be even considered that. And that's different. Same thing with the word Norteño. We always considered all ourselves Norteños. Come to find out, we weren't considered Norteños in prison. We were just damn Northerners or Enners, right? The, the titles change. The mentality doesn't. So anyways, we're kicking back. We're on the fucking door. We're looking. Bam, gang of Sureños start coming in. Bakers, bakers everywhere. Bakers on their neck, their stomach. All right, these are some real ones. These vaultas in Bakersfield... They're about the activities in the business. And now they know they're in Northern California, deep in Sacramento in Northern California. They got to do what they got to do. So it's the first day of them coming out with us. And what it was, was they would put you on lockdown. If you got into any shenanigans, a write-up or fucked up, you'd get locked in your cell, you and your celly or just you, and you couldn't come out for a time period. So anyways, this was my very, 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 it was my second day. It was my, I pulled up. We didn't have no program. I went to my cell. My cell is kicking it all night. He's gaming me up. The next day is the first day we're going to go on line movement. They didn't have the Southsiders go on the line movement with us for breakfast or chow, right? So we went, boom, no Southerners involved. Everything was good. I was chilling next to this Asian from MOD chopping game with him. He was from Stockton. He had a funny ass mullet, spiky ass hair and a long dropped ass. And you know them Asians, their hair is straight than a motherfucker. His shit was thin and straightened out. He looked like the fucking, uh, the, 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 um, what is that? The skeleton from Iron Maiden. Exactly what he looked like. Only Asian. And he wasn't playing. So anyways, we're chopping it up. Bam, go back to the building. We sit in the day room. Well, as we sit in the day room, Bob to see the fucking Southsiders. Why do the cops do them like this? They bring six of them out. Right in front of everyone. Everyone's sitting in the day room just kicking it. And they bring these dudes out. What they were doing is they were releasing people that were either done with doing their time in what I would guess lockdown, and they just decided to integrate right there, right? Poor dudes. So as they bring them out, the whole back row, they had kept that back row clear because the cops would tell you, sit there, sit there. And there were brown Cadillac chairs, so here comes all these vultures from Bakers. Hey, and I'm going to be honest with you, real talk, they didn't look intimidated. They didn't look scared. These vultures' chins were up. They were ready for whatever. I was really surprised that they didn't get off. Now, you got to understand, I'm still young in the game. So I don't understand about taking flight on site and all that. I'm learning as I go. Now, I know what I know from Juvenile Hall, but because I was fighting a murder case, they kept me and a few other guys that were fighting murder cases segregated from everyone. So I know about the North and South issue. Believe me, I'm in there for killing the Southerners. So at the time, I know what it is, but I'm not really like, I don't know who's who or what's what other than these vultures have Bakers. And where's Bakers at? It's Bakersfield. Oh, Benson. So as they come, they sit in the back seats like this, right? M me mugging. So there's a vata named Rooster from Fresno, Robert Moreno. And, and I've told this story in the past, but I'm going to tell that to, to tell the continuance of the story, right? So as he comes out of, he comes out for lockdown, he's with the activities. I remember he had a glass eye, he looked like this. He was a bulldog, right? And so as he comes out, the senior, who's like the main cop there, right? He's a YC, a youth counselor. He sees him. He's like, oh, Moreno, are you going to act right? I guess. Rooster been getting into all the business. He's like kind of like a shot caller for the Northerners. Like he tells everyone like, let's get off where we're mad at. Just a straight soldier, right? And so as he comes out, he's right there. The cop's telling him in front of everyone. He's on blast. You're going to act right? He says, yeah. And he looks right there. He was like, yeah, this is North, then, homie. And just rushes the Southsiders. Boom, starts getting off. Everyone jumps up. Chairs are flying. I ain't going to lie. I'm trying to throw a chair or two. I don't know if I hit a homie or not. Red on red. Even before I did red on red, right? Everyone's fighting. It's a melee. And I ain't going to lie, I hate melees like that because when you're, there's 40, 50 dudes trying to get off on seven dudes, you're hitting each other. No one can get to them. Motherfuckers are trying to drag them. These fuckers are slanging them. They're handling their business. Um, but they got fucked up pretty bad. So anyways, they lock everybody down. All North and South is locked down. Now, each 
In NRCC, you got building one, building two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's how it went. Every building is individual. So if we're on lockdown, it doesn't mean everyone's on lockdown. Like they heard about it, like, hey, man, the homies got off on the Southsiders today or the Southerners rushed the homeboys or whatever, right? But that doesn't mean they automatically got to take off. It just is what it is. Sometimes they didn't have Southerners. Like on Dorm 2, there wasn't a lot of them. Like, I ain't going to lie. They were vicious on Dorm 2. That was like 16-year-olds to, I think, 18, and them motherfuckers would smack your shit. So they didn't really send too many Southsiders over there. They would send the older ones to our compa because we were youngsters, and they figured, hey, this is a safer environment for them. Shit, I bet you, I bet it wasn't. <laughs> right. Don't fuck with no young kids with knives. They're different. So anyways, we're chilling out. It happened, right? So I'm settled with my celly, and we're telling the cops it's about a week, and the Southsiders were watching them every day. They're spitting on our windows, talking that shit. They're going to chow. They're going now. And we see all the blacks talking to them. We're like, you bunch of hypocrite ass motherfuckers. Because the brothers was like, we don't fuck with Serenios. We get it off of those Serenios, right? Now these motherfuckers over there chopping it up like, hey, it's supposed to spread them, right? So we're like, fuck you and fuck them, right? So they're walking. Everything's good. They're programming. So we tell the cops like, hey, when are we going to program? Like, let us out so we can get off where we're mad at. Like, we want to really get, get you know, these motherfuckers are just looking at us laughing like, bye, y'all. Bye, Bakers. I said, bye. So, right? We're like, oh, fuck that. So we're waiting, like, let us get our action. Now I feel like I'm laced up, even though I'm getting laced up in the cell. I feel like I'm a veteran already. Like, I'm already sharpening something. I want to go out there and book them. So anyways, we're kicking it, right? And the cops come, the senior, he's in the middle of the hallway of the, of the cells, right? There's cells on both sides. And he's like, hey, so we're going to start releasing northerners. He doesn't let everybody know. The cat is out the bag. Southsider's like, all right, is it? So... So, right? He's like, we're going to um let all the Northerners out, but we're going to do it one cell at a time, one day at a time. What? Guess whose cell got picked first? You said it. Fill it up with unleaded, right? Boom. Vidari, Sosa. You guys are going out there first. I don't want to go out there, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to go out there with all the mean, big, bad Bakersfield Southsiders, right? Oh, yes. Hey, you can hear Vatas going, shout. Right? I don't know how Southside, they have like their own communication. It goes, Shaw! right? They're doing their thing. That's what they used to always say. So anyways, excuse me, I just ate. I got something in the thrizzle. That roast beef hits different. So anyways, I'm walking, right? We go out the cell. Now, we see some other homeboys. It was the homeboy, homie from Hayward. J Cat named Joker from San Leandro. And another homeboy, right? Three homeboys, they had just rolled up that day. They were sitting in the day room. So they got the privilege of getting jumped on the first day they get there. So they get to get in line. And we're going to go to the gym. Now, I had never been to the gym. Remember, I just got there, got into a melee. We've been on lockdown. So now I'm exploring the, the situation and the avenues of a gym. Cool, right? So all the south side, there's two lines. They're all lined up in one line. And me and Inez are right there. And they're making sure they're right next to us. And we're walking. And I'm telling Inez, should we just get off, fool? Should we just get off? He's like, wait up. We're going to see what it is, man. We're going to try to get some weapons or something, right? And I'm like, hey, I got that fucking piece cheeked, right? And he was like, for reals? I was like, yeah, I feel like Wes Watson right now. So anyways, we get there. The piece, I take it out. It, it, it had a rather different type of smell to it. So I threw it away. I was a young kid. Like, yeah, I don't want to eat this. It smells like shit, right? So I threw it away. So it was, it was a fucked up ass spork anyways. So I'm right there with the homie like, Shh, damn, we're like, there's like a, a, a little part of the gym with little free weights, right? So we see the South Stars are all over there huddled having a junta. Like they're just waiting, but in the time, we know what's going to happen. So we hit up the other homies. Like, hey, bro, where you from? The homies like, homie from Hayward. He was a white dude. I remember it. What's up, bro? The other dude joking. Hey, I don't want no problems. I just, I claim North Day, but I don't claim North Day, North Day. Like, they claim North Day, North Day. I don't claim North Day, North Day. He was all weird. I was like, how about I kick you in your ass? You know what I'm going to kick you up out the North Day. How about that? The other dude was like, I'm ready for whatever. I remember he was down. I think he was from Madera. So I'm like, hey, look, trip out. There's a gang of Southerners right there. There was like eight or nine of them at this time. Right? Like, to us, that's a gang of them. Because they were all big. They were all 16, 17, 18-year-olds. We're fucking 11, 12, and 13. Psh, it's ugly. Right? Age ain't number to number. Unless it's the South Side. They're big. Right? We didn't want no problem. So anyways, the homie's like, all right. Well, what I didn't realize was there was a vato named Tweety from Baker Stress. I'll never forget. They had these free weights. They had like the fives, tens, twenties, or whatever. Right? This vato had one of those 10 pounds, the bells in his hand. And so when we all line up to leave, they're lined up like this. And we already know what's going down. And they're targeting little Inez because he was like the oldest one of us. He's like 15. He was skinny and shit, but he like he was with the business. Like motherfuckers knew him. Like I said, he was seasoned. He was in his first term. So they were like, there's the target. Then we'll just beat all the rest of these kids up. Right? So I'm like, damn. So I'm right there behind my celly. Now I got my celly's back a million percent. Ain't no doubt about it. He's an East Side Fresno 14. Boom, dog. Norteño. So shit, I'm with the, I'm Merced. We're 209. 
This is back when Fresno was 209, right? And Baker's was 805. So as we're posted up right there, we start to walk down. Um, the cops are like, they blow the whistle. They're like, come on, we're going to go back to the compa. It's a nice little walk. Man, do you think we made it out of the gym? I'll give you one guess. Oh, um, so they didn't let us make it out of the gym, right? This motherfucker hits the right name. His name was Clover from Oki Baker's. I'll never forget. Um, he takes a swing. Mm, catches little Inez. Inez is chunking him with them. They're about the same size. They're both thin. Chunking them, right? Man, this South Sider, his name, we called him Waralapush. He was from fucking Vario Bakers. Or, 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 excuse me, he was from, uh, yeah, he was from Vario. He backed, he's a big, ugly motherfucker. Like, if he popped a blog on, he'd have knocked me out. I'd have been like, oh, shit. He hit me with a blackhead, right? So he backs up. He's all plugged out. No one wants to touch him because you, you don't want to get your hands with pus all over him, right? So I started chunking him with this dude, Bird, but what I didn't realize was he had a fucking weight. This motherfucker swung it. He was a big dude, too, on swole, and he hit my shit. Boom! My thumb was on my wrist. It was just dangling right there. So I'm trying to fight like this. I'm trying to get the weight on. This fool smashed me. They beat the fuck out of us, man. That fool Joker from San Diego. I know I'm going to be a with anyone when I grow up. Right there, fucking stomping. Stop, stop, stop. They beat us up. We end up getting back to the compa. They're taking us to the hospital. They're taking them to the fucking compa. They're bragging. We got them suckers, man. We're straight They're talking their shit, right? Homies are like, all right, we're coming out next, right? Oh, believe. You think that the, the, the cop didn't? No, let me tell you what he did. He'll say, oh, you, you South Stars want to act crazy? Shao? Okay. Shao. All the Northerners are coming out tomorrow with you guys. No Shao. Right? They, was, they was done. Next day, they got taxed, right? But my thumb was still dangling. They took me to the infirmary. And the stupid ass doctor was supposed to twist my shit, do whatever they're supposed to do and fix it. They did it. And now I have the fucked up thumb. Can you guys see it? it's a flat thumb? It's all fucked up. I know people are going to make fun of it. Gun, hey, that dude crazy with media gun. I got a fucked up thumb. His thumb. You know what I mean? It wasn't from shoving it up the ass of a South Sider. It was from when breaking it with a fucking weight, dummy. But that's how that happened. Anyways, that was my first incident with 805 Bakers. Well, I get to Nellis, right? Fred C. Nellis. And there wasn't very many Vatos from Bakers at first. And they started shooting them up there. And I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you guys the exact truth. Any Vatos from upstate that were considered like Bakersfield on up, they had a little hard time when I was there in Nellis. They were called 13 and a half. They were called Reject Northerners. Uh, a lot of the Southsiders from LA, IE, San Diego didn't really fuck with too many uh, Southerners from up north. But Bakersfield, even though they had it bad, they pushed. And they gained their respect little by little, man. And they were fucking handling business, right? But, um... I was there, it was about two weeks into me being there, I was at the school area, and I remember the word on the curb was that they was going to smash my brains in, so I was going to get off first. I had already told myself, like, hey, as soon as I walked through the metal detectors, they have these bricks, right? And one of the bricks, the homeboy Spookio from Salas told me, they're always loose right there. He would kick it every time he walked by, he was like, they're loose, bro, they're loose. So if we need to throw them in a sock and break someone's shit, which we did eventually, and I'm like, all right, so I'm thinking I'm just going to grab a brick, and I'm just going to smash the fucking first outsider I see, right? I didn't even get a chance to do that. So as I come through the metal detectors, I'm with the homeboy Chucky from Sanho, right? Chucky's class is that way. My class is that way. Chucky always had a pencil on him. He's stabbing eyes out. He didn't care, right? So as he's going that way, I told him, hey, bro, I'm going to get off right now. He's like, do what you got to do. Like, I'm like, let's get off. He's like, bro, I got a math test. I'm like, damn, right? So as he goes, now you think about it, like, wait, hold up, bro. Fuck two plus two. There's four surrenders right there. It equals eight, right? Let's go. But anyways, if it times whatever. So anyways, he walks that way, and as he walks that way, I snatched a brick up, and there's a dude from Baker's right there. There's a big old Baker's on the back of his head, and I'm like, ooh, ooh-wee, for you gets clown, ooh-wee, South Central Cartel, I'm about to smash this whole shit in, and it was like slow motion. I went like this, right? That motherfucker pulled out a big-ass piece and got to booking some other South Sider, uh, 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 right? I dropped that brick quicker than I picked it up, like... Murderer! <laughs> I hit the ground. Ah, alarms went down. That foot was just booking him, right? I guess what had happened was that dude had disrespect Bakersfield. Like, hey, you guys are North Daniels. You guys ain't Southsiders. You guys are this, that. And that Valto got off where he was mad at. He he beat me to the punch. Little did he know I was about to brick his head, but I didn't get a chance to because he bricked someone else's head with a piece. So I always had a lot of respect for Bakersfield. Man, I could tell you so many more stories about the city of Bakersfield. You know, <clears throat> one more. Fuck it. So... When I got the murder case, I was on the run. And what we did was me and my homeboy stole the car in every city pretty much until we got a car that ran good. So we stole one of Merced and we get and we broke down in Bakersfield. And we're in Bakersfield. And all we have is a dent puller and a toothbrush. I don't know. I'm not trying to teach you how to steal a car. I'm just saying, man, that's what, how we did it. 
Then pull it fast, boom, Nissan Pathfinder, let's go. And so we're in this Home Depot parking lot, man, I remember. And we're trying to fucking pull a fucking uh, 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 Toyota, to, not was it, it was a Toyota uh, 4 runner. And we were trying to pill it, right? We really wanted a Nissan Pathfinder because we heard they were good on gas. Here, here we are, the Efficient Thieves song. Hey, let's not steal that car. It's bad on gas, right? So we're trying to steal the more cost-efficient one. And so as we're trying to pill it, man, hey, this big old South Side from Bakers came out. We we're trying to steal this car. And I ain't going to lie, man. That fool checked me, had a good talking to me, and slapped me right in my mask. I was a little kid. I was all sad and shit. I just, I'm, up, I'm on the run for killing one of you. Shut up. All right. <laughs> Got me. I respect Bakersfield to the fullest, man. For those that sleep on Bakers, they don't know what it is, man. Bakersfield moves differently. Real talk. Especially in the Youth Authority. In prison, I could tell you so many stories. The Bakersfield Rafla was very, very vicious. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. It's real life, real talk, man. It is what it is. If you're not hip to the channel, man, like and subscribe. Get hip to it because I'm coming from the hip with it, man. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, struggle, and strive for what I honestly and truly believe in. And that's the betterment of all people. Gracias. Bang, bang.